One Shot, One Life is presented by Lincoln Coin and Bullion. Buying and selling gold, silver, platinum, and palladium bars and coins. And rare and collectible coins. We also buy gold scrap and sterling flatware. If you wish to buy or sell any of these items, please call 402-327-2853 for an appointment. One Shot, One Life. Welcome to One Shot, One Life. Helping you win with money, people, faith, work, health and your hopes and dreams. We help you stop worrying and start winning. I will not waste my life watching the world go by. I've only got one shot, one shot, one life. And now, welcome your host, best-selling author, speaker, CEO, husband, and dad, Doug Fitzgerald on 1499.3 KLIN. Well, welcome to One Shot, One Life, the show where we help you stop worrying about the things of life and start winning at life. I'm your host, Doug Fitzgerald. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here, and we also want to welcome everybody that's watching us on Facebook Live. Uh, if you're wanting to watch the show and see all that goes on behind the scenes, all the crazy things and the fun things, even during the commercial breaks, you can open up your Facebook and go to 1400 KLIN and watch us live. And afterwards, when the show is completed, you'll be able to watch the recording as well. Of course, taking care of all of our Facebook Live producing is Johnny Cadillac. Johnny, thank you for all the hard work you do there. And uh, all the main audio feeds, like the commercials and the cool intros and outros and all that's taken care of by my executive producer, Josh Floyd. Josh, thanks for doing all you do. Always. You give me way too much credit, though, because I'm not really doing all of that. Oh, yes, you are. I mean, I push a button and everything <laughs> plays. But... You make sure everything happens. I but... shouldn't say that. It's the magic of radio. I mean, I'm over here working all the time. I was trying to help you out there. Oh, thank you. Thank so... you. I ruined it for myself. <laughs> well, hey, um, on fa speaking of Facebook, um, you know, we get questions with people that watch. We've got some things that happen during the commercial breaks. Could you explain to our viewers what they will see and hear during the show? Yep. So because of like licensing and stuff like that, we're not able to uh, continue playing audio through our commercial breaks. So um, rather than just, you know, nothing, a blank screen until we come back, we want you to know that we're still here, that we're still live. So you'll see an overhead shot. And Johnny, I love doing this. Johnny, can you put us on the on the overhead shot? Thank you. So here's... Here's what it'll look like during all the breaks. Uh, just so you know that we're still here, you'll see us milling about and yelling at each other and stuff. Um, while the while the breaks are going, while the ads are playing, and then uh, as soon as the ads are over, then we'll go uh, back. You'll audio will kick back on, and then you'll you'll see our, our mugs close up. There you go. Last week had a great show. We'll talk about that in a second, mm -hmm. where we had show and tell. So sometimes it's really good to, <laughs> some cool to have stuff. the video as well. Yeah. Well, you know what? We keep growing as a show. We deeply appreciate our partners. We have another new sponsor joining us today. I'm so excited to have them with us. The Searcy team of home real estate here in Lincoln, Jeff, Mary, Hannah, Wes, and Jasper are simply awesome realtors. And um, I'm going to share more about them later in the show, but I wanted to welcome them to One Shot, One Life today. It's the Searcy team of home real estate. You can check them out at searcyteam.com. Well, again, last week uh, we talked about one of my biggest passions in the area of money, which was gold and silver. We had the crew from Lincoln Coin and Bullion on educating us about how gold and silver can help us during the uncertain economic times that we have right now and how they can, it can help us uh, beat inflation, too. Plus, there's a whole lot of other, other information. If you didn't get a chance to hear or watch the show, you can check us out on our podcast at KLAN.com or KLAN's app as well. Plus, you can go back to the Facebook page at 1400 KLAN and obviously watch it. You're going to want to watch it because we had some cool gold and silver that we showed, some 1,000-ounce mm -hmm bar of silver which was really cool that you were <laughs> so picking heavy. up and trying to handle uh so it's a definitely trying worth to handle. it I, I picked up that i was doing <laughs> you're you know, doing like bench, bench presses, presses and stuff <laughs> yeah you bet curls also um josh tell us about the podcast and how people can check that out yeah the podcast every one of our shows goes out into the podcast verse and there it lives for forever and ever on all of the podcast platforms Spotify is my favorite platform. I don't get money for saying that. That's just the one I happen to use and I like. But there's a ton of them out there. Uh, a lot of people like uh, Pocket Casts is another good app that you get on your phone and you sign up. It's free. Uh, you can pay for Spotify, but only if you want to listen to music. You don't have to <laughs> to get our podcast. In whatever podcast app you choose, you just search one shot, all one word, one life, 
all one word. And then, yeah, like I said, you can listen to any of our shows from the very beginning. Yep. Well, today is uh, is another awesome show that we have lined up on tap. Uh, you're going to find out how to find the work that you love and create a life of passion and purpose. We're honored and excited to have New York Times bestselling author and career expert Dan Miller on the show. Uh, the first time I saw Dan was back in 2018. He spoke at a conference that I attended out in Ohio, uh, and he was amazing. Uh, he was so down to earth. He was real, and I took several pages of notes that I actually implemented into my business and career. Um, and then the very next weekend, uh, we actually spent more time together. We were attending kind of a red carpet type of event for our publisher who put on uh, this event for the books that they were releasing that year, which included one of Dan's books and, and One Shot, One Life, my book as well. So once we kicked off the show, and I knew this was a sure thing when we signed the contract with NRG Media, um, I knew that Dan was somebody I, I had to get on the show to, to introduce to our listeners. So I want you to listen close to this. Um, if you've ever buried your dreams in an attempt to be practical or realistic, Dan's going to show you how to embrace those very dreams and how it's the most practical way to enjoy your life and achieve success. So uh, this is going to be an awesome show. He's already helped thousands, hundreds of thousands of people redirect their careers, evaluate new income sources, and achieve balanced living. Like I said before, he's a New York Times bestselling author. He has three books out, uh, 48 Days to the Work and Life You Love, No More Dreaded Mondays, and Wisdom Meets Passion. He's been a guest on CBS, MSNBC, The Dave Ramsey Show, other national outlets. Um, so if you know someone who's looking to create the career and life that they absolutely love, or if it's for you, today's show is for you. And I want you to go out there, have them tune in, check it out, and if uh, they can't listen live, make sure to check out our recordings on our podcast or on Facebook. Uh, and as always, uh, we're going to open up the Rick Stein Recognition Hotline. We'd love for you to text us in, a quick text, 402-479-1400, and we'll also be monitoring our Facebook feed as well uh, if you're watching us, uh, so feel free to share in the comment section below where Johnny Cadillac will be taking care of that for us. Well, um, we've got an amazing lineup of guests throughout the rest of April on One Shot, One Life. Next Saturday, April 9th, we'll have Miss Nebraska USA, Natalie Pieper, and Miss Nebraska Teen USA, uh, Farron Meddy. Both comp uh, competed in the Miss Nebraska pageant a few weeks ago, which I was a judge for, which was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, you're going to get to hear their stories, understand uh, their life story and what their ultimate passions are and their platform that they're, they're going to be sharing across the country uh, representing Nebraska in the Miss USA pageant. Then on April 16th, we won't have a show, but we'll be right back on April 23rd uh, with award-winning film producer, actress, and author Betty Jewel Slater. She's amazing. Uh, she uses monologues from Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, uh, Coretta Scott King, Bessie Coleman, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She uses those monologues to help individuals and organizations identify and break through limiting systems, ideas, and beliefs. Uh, it's I, so important right now. Oh, my goodness. And I saw her do her Harriet Tubman monologue. It was awesome. I mean, it's amazing. So you can check her out on, on her website as well, Betty Jewel Slater. Uh, she's an author as well of the book called Big Shoes to Fill, How to Establish Your Own Brand When Following the Footsteps of an Icon, which is really good. The reason why I'm going to have her on the show, number one, she's going to share her amazing life story. Uh, she's going to teach us how to break through our own limiting self-beliefs that hold us back. But what we're really going to dig into is how to use, utilize our faith to help us successfully navigate through the current world issues of politics, the ec economic stress that we have going on right now, and racism. Uh, so it's going to be a powerful show. Make sure you tune into that in, uh, on Saturday, April 23rd. Well, I want to wrap up our first segment here by talking about, uh, actually, actually, I'm going to ask you a question, Josh, and okay. I'll ask our listeners the same question. How are you doing right now in pursuing your true hopes and dreams? I could be doing better. <laughs> um, I mean, to tell you the truth, what? Well, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say I could be doing better because, um, in a roundabout way, I ended up doing what I've always wanted to do, yep. and that's this: right. be on radio. Yeah. I, I, you know, as a kid, I wanted to be a DJ, like you. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to be you. You wanted to be Casey Kasem. I did. I wanted to be Rick. Keep Dees. your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. That's why. Yeah, I always liked. Yeah, yeah so. it's so good. It's so, so, yeah, I, you know what I found is too often people will ignore their heart's desire. And, um, you know, those desires really give birth to dreams deep within us. But sometimes we allow our dreams to be held captive in our hearts, trapped by our own negative thoughts, 
of it being irrational, maybe unattainable or irresponsible. Mm -hmm. um, but worse yet, we may even allow those negative thoughts and words and actions of others to lock those dreams deep down inside of us and keep us from pursuing uh, what we really want to live out. Um, you know, with life nowadays being so busy as well, sometimes we simply just don't take the time to identify our, or pursue our dreams. And that leaves us, you know, feeling empty at times. I've had several conversations this week with people who just feel like they're not living up to their full potential. And therefore, they feel like they're inadequate or they're not um, living out the life that they were called to live out. You know, now is the time to get serious, just like what you were talking about, Josh. Now is the time to get going and start living the life that you were born to live with the passions, gifts, and talents that you were given. I want to encourage you not to hold back. Um, you're only given right one shot at this amazing one life, so give it all you got. Uh, you know, as I work with clients and I coach them, quite often they'll tell me that they feel guilty or selfish for wanting to pursue their heart's desires. It's critical to understand that those desires, many of which I believe God has purposely placed on our heart, are there for a reason. If your hopes and dreams align with God's plan for your life, you will find that ultimately they will serve and bless other people. And that's how you're going to know you're going to be on the right track, knowing that ultimately your hopes and dreams are there to serve those people around you. Um, and that's going to help you not feel guilty about them. And so as I've worked with people, it's been really helpful. I want to ask you five questions just to think about, just to ponder in this area of hopes and dreams, um, especially if you just don't know what to do or you don't know what your hopes and dreams are. Let me ask you these five questions that might spark something in you to really start pursuing them. The first one is this. If I could do anything in the world and money and time were not issues, what would I do? Question number two. What did I used to dream about doing that I have since forgotten about or intentionally buried deep inside myself? Number three. What did I dream about doing or becoming when I was a kid that I still think about today? Fourth, what have others told me I do well and that I should consider doing? And finally, what dream has God put into my heart? So I want to encourage you to fully pursue your hopes and dreams today with passion and go for it. And if you don't, my question to you is, who will? Who will? We're going to take our first short break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by New York Times bestselling author Dan Miller. Dan will be sharing with us practical advice that we can use immediately to find and or create the work in life that we love. That's why I'm so excited to have him on. Plus, Rick Stein Recognition Hotline is open for your texts at 402-479-1400. And you can also comment on our Facebook feed as well. You are listening to One Shot, One Life on Lincoln's number one news and talk station, 1499.3 KLIN. One Shot, One Life is presented by Lincoln Coin & Bullion, where we treat each customer with respect and dignity. A customer who purchases $50,000 of gold is not treated differently than a customer selling a gold filling. Every customer uniquely contributes to our business success. You're listening to 1499.3 KLIN.
out about now. It's time to stop worrying and start winning. This is One Shot, One Life on 1499.3 KLIN. Well, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Doug Fitzgerald. We want to thank our title sponsor, Lincoln Coin and Bullion. Pat, Courtney, Katie, and Aaron and the crew have been my trusted precious metals team for over 10 years. They're so good to work with and fun. Um, if you've been considering buying gold or silver, now's the time to act, especially with everything that's going on with the economy. They're the place to go to. And um, if you have gold and silver that you'd like to sell, Lincoln Coin and Bullion is the place you need to go. They're going to give you a fair and competitive price for your bullion. I highly recommend Lincoln Coin and Bullion. Um, here's the thing. They only work with you one-on-one -on -one because they want to educate you. They want to make sure that what you're doing you feel comfortable with. And they take one-on-one -on -one appointments only. So you can call them for that appointment at 402-327-2853. That's 402-327-2853. They've been around for over 15 years, and I've been purchasing from them for over 10 years. You can find more information about Lincoln Coin and Bullion at their website, LincolnCoinandBullion.com. That's LincolnCoinandBullion.com. And, of course, if you head on in there, make sure you let them know that you heard about them on the show, One Shot, One Life. Tell them Doug sent you. That's right. Tell them that, That's what we need to say. Tell them <laughs> Doug sent you. We need to get that on the commercial. Well, hey, uh, today's team is excited to have our guest in and to join us. Dan Miller is a New York Times bestselling author of three books, 48 Days to the Work and Life You Love, No More Dreaded Mondays, and Wisdom Meets Passion. He's been a guest on CBS's The Early Show, MSNBC, The Dave Ramsey Show, and several other shows. Uh, he is active in helping individuals redirect their careers, evaluate new sources of income, and achieved balanced living. And um, he's joining us all the way from sunny Florida. So, Dan, welcome to One Shot, One Life. Hey, thanks, Doug. It is indeed sunny here. <laughs> well, there, last week we would have just dreamt of being down there. Today we're finally having some good weather here in Lincoln, uh, Dan. It's going to be in the 60s, so we're, we're accepting that. So thanks for sending some of that our way. <laughs> well, absolutely. Hey, no matter where you are, sometimes my wife gets annoyed at me saying this. I tell her, I carry my sunshine inside me, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> there you go. I love that. I love that. Well, Dan, I vividly remember um, the first time I heard you speak at a live conference. It was in Columbus, Ohio. I had just released my book, One Shot, One Life, and I was exploring ways that I could take that message and passion and develop it into a business. And what you shared on stage that day uh, tremendously helped me see how I could turn my message into an active platform. And part of that is living out my childhood dream right now of being on the radio, having my own show. So I want to thank you for acting out on your passion because it's helped so many people around the country, including myself. So thank you for living that out and really encouraging people to live theirs as well. Well, that's encouraging to me to hear that. I'm thrilled you took action and thrilled you found one unique way to share your message. Well, that's why I'm excited for people to get to know you, our audience to get to hear from you as well and possibly see you as well on Facebook. Now, your uh, personal life story um, it really is intriguing, and uh, it's really impactful. Why don't we go ahead and start out by you sharing your life story with us and how it led you ultimately to where you are today? Sure. I grew up on a farm. We were very, very poor. I remember when we bought our first cow, one cow, and eked out a living milking that cow and then adding to it, milked them by hand until we got quite a few before we ever went to milking machines. But that's how I grew up. Very poor. You get up in the morning, you work hard, you throw hay bales in the middle of summer. And I had too much time, I think, Doug, out in the fields driving around those little Ford tractors to think, to dream, to imagine. And I thought, you know, I want to do more, go more, be more, have more than what this life seems that it's going to offer me. And so we didn't have radio or TV in our house. We were very, very poor. But I had access to a little country library, and I would pull off the shelves these Horatio Alger stories, you know, rags to riches, how guys started with nothing and ended up doing really well. And those inspired me. And then when I was about 13 years old, I got a hold of a little audio recording by Earl Nightingale titled The Strangest Secret. Mm, yeah, and I yeah. would listen to that over and over and over. And that gravelly-voiced old man said, you can become what you think about. Not can, you will become what you think about. And I thought, could I change the direction of my life as a poor farm kid in Ohio by controlling what I think about? And that became a foundational principle for me then and continues to be today. So I looked for other options. I looked for ways that I could do more. I stretched with little entrepreneurial ideas on the farm, doing things to provide services to the neighbors, and went on to college, went to the Ohio State University, and kept finding those opportunities. And I've always been an entrepreneur. I've never had a real job. So when I talk about 
work you love, I've always accepted the challenge to not look for something very traditional, just create if I can't find it, create it. So I've never had a real job, but in that process, when I was in my mid forties, started teaching the Sunday school class, the church we were going to in Nashville, Tennessee, and it was on career life transitions. And it was a really funny thing. I thought I'd have, you know, the 18 year old wondering what to major in in college, or maybe the 22 year old who realized, wow, that first job wasn't too great. Now he wanted to find another job. I had a few of those, but what surprised me, I had attorneys, physicians, dentists, accountants, mm-hmm. engineers, and pastors. And I'm like, what are you guys doing here? They said, well, you know what, we're doing okay. Everybody sees us as very successful. I'm making a lot of money, but I don't think this is really it. That's the spot yeah. that I have dug into deeply ever since then. And it led to the things that I wrote and the things that I do today. It was unexpected out of that little Sunday school class that everything I do today grew out of there because the needs were so great that were expressed there. You know, um, I've had several conversations this week as, as I've talked to people about having you on the show and what comes up quite a bit, especially when I work with people, and we'll talk about this in the next segment, but you know, people are really trying to find significance with their life and in what they do. And your book allows people to, um, to explore that, to really identify that. Um, I'm holding your book up right now. If you can see it here on Facebook, 48 Days to the Work and Life That You Love. Why did you write this book then? It was really because of the expressed needs in that Sunday school class. We started having people come from other churches where they'd come there and then rush back to their church for the sermon because they just come to that Sunday school class. People started coming in from other states. And I thought, this is nuts. We need to open this up and make it easier. So we moved it from a Sunday school class to a Monday night. I did that for eight years. But people immediately started asking for content. Somebody say, you know, I've got a son-in-law who's been without work for three months. I want him to hear what you just told us. Mm-hmm. What do you have I can give him? And I didn't have anything. So it wasn't that I saw myself as an author. I ultimately, just because of the request, put those loose notes into a three ring binder, a couple little cassette wells in there like we had back then and started (laughs) selling that. And then I went to a conference, Megabook University in Los Angeles with Mark Victor Hansen, co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mm. He stood up there and told us how he sold that. I actually invited my friend Dave Ramsey to go with me. So he and Sharon, Joanna, we went out there, sat there and listened to this gracious gentleman tell us how to sell books. We came back and we both started doing that. And in the next 30 months, I sold over $2 million worth of my little three ring binder. Then I had publishers knocking on my door. See, I, I, I didn't do a proposal. I didn't find an agent. I didn't go to to publishers at all. I just started responding to what people were asking for. And then the traditional methods started showing up. So then we did a traditional book. And of course, the first one came out in 2000. I've updated it every five years Mm -hmm. because the workplace continues to change, but the core message continues. And that continues to do very well. So I updated it in 05, 2010, 15, and 20. And I'm working vigorously on notes that will be in the 2025 version because so many things are changing right now in the workplace. Earlier this week, we were talking about that, and you were sharing with me some of the things that you're going to be adding to the book, which will be really good because, especially as a pandemic hit, we've, you know, we've had a lot of changes in the workforce and how people are approaching work. Um, but let's, you know, to the, in, in regards to your book, um, who is it specifically for and what will they learn? You know, it, the, the common connection is somebody who has a mindset of growth, somebody who's not content with Mm. just the way things are. So it's not just age, because we have homeschool teenagers who use the book as a study guide. And then I have the 65 year old CEO who just lost his job, who uses it. So the principles are easy to understand. It's looking inward first, 85% of the process of proper direction, having the confidence that you're going in the right direction comes from looking inward first. Only 15% is the application. People too quickly look for, well, gee, I know Uncle Harry, you know, made a lot of money doing this and they try to replicate that. Or I know somebody who got into crypto, uh, cryptocurrency or somebody who's doing fulfilled by Amazon. So I'm just gonna try to model that. That can be a Band-Aid solution and ultimately be f- lead to frustration. 
So my process encourages people to really look inward first, discover the core foundational pieces, how God has uniquely gifted you, and then look for the application. So that can be somebody who's just starting out in the workforce, somebody who's mid-life, who realizes, wow, this is not the bed of roses that I anticipated, or somebody who's looking for a second career, having served perhaps through a long career, now they're ready for something else. So it intrigues me, I mean, I didn't anticipate that, but it intrigues me, uh, the breadth of people who are getting help with the 48 Days message. Yeah, I, I highly recommend that you grab the book. If that sounds like something that would help you or somebody that you know, you can get it for yourself. Give it to somebody else. As a matter of fact, I gave my book away this morning. Dan, uh, your book away this morning uh, to somebody who it's really going to encourage. So uh, I highly recommend that. Now, let's I want to backtrack just a little bit. You've had great success. Um, You're a national speaker. You speak at conferences. You've got books. You work with a ton of different people uh, individually and and through social media. Um, But was life always easy for you? I mean, did this did this process of really finding out what you were designed to do? um, Was it always about success or did you have some stumbles along the way? You know, it's a great question because I really figured out the process pretty early on. However, the application has varied a lot for me and in my experimentation with the application as to what that work would look like. Yeah, I've stubbed my toe a couple times along the way. (laughs) Believe me, this has not been just a linear path always going upward. Because of some early success, it gave me that false confidence to experiment Mm, too much, to risk too much. And I did that. I built some early successes. I had a health and fitness center. I had an auto accessories business. I was teaching as an adjunct at the university, you know, coaching people, doing a variety of things. And I too easily leveraged those in some financial decisions and it put me in a really precarious position. I realized I was in a precarious position. Actually, what happened is the bank where I had these open lines of credit that were easy to get back in the day, it, the bank changed ownership three times in two years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all my good old buddy friends were gone. New ownership said, hey, who's this kid that has these open lines of credit? They put the screws to me. And I thought, hey, I'll just bail. So at that point, I had a health and fitness center. This is when I was just in my early 40s. Oh, and wow. I thought, well, I'll just cash out. I'll just sell it. And so I just put it up for public auction. I thought I'll walk away with my shirt in my back. No big deal. I'm an entrepreneur. I can find something else to do quickly. Well, it didn't turn out exactly as I had planned. And all of a sudden, I mean, I woke up the next morning realizing I was about half a million dollars in debt, mm. legitimate debt, some of that to the IRS, which is very unforgiving. <laughs> Again, being an entrepreneur, I thought, hey, a couple of years, I'll knock this out, get it behind me and go on. Well, it took longer than that. The compounding interest and penalties from the IRS are just crippling. Mm. And it actually took me 12 years. Sometimes I hesitate to share that. I don't want to assume that's the case for anybody. That's a very long time. But, you know, even in that period of time, my my optimism didn't change. The things we did that were fun as a family didn't change. My kids were young then they don't remember that as a tough time because there was still joy and laughter in our house you know and i want to really emphasize that work is a tool Mm -hmm. for a successful life but it's not the only thing that defines us so while i was struggling to rebuild and, and unravel the mess i had made my life still was very very full and joyful so we did get out of that and then That's during the time when 48 days, the material really took off and opened some new opportunities for me and things that I really hadn't anticipated early in my career at all. So it unfolded. It's a continuing process, a continuing journey as we continue to evaluate the opportunities that change and explode around us. Well, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. I know our listeners do as well. There's times in our lives when we struggle with things and that we worry about, especially our careers and finances coming in to take care of our families, and it eats at us. I know for me, I've had those those moments, and that's why we have the show. We want to help people stop worrying and start winning, and that's why I'm excited, Dan, for you to be on. Uh, We're going to take our first quick, uh, second quick break, actually, here, uh, and then we're going to dig into some of the principles in your book, 48 Days to the Work and Life that You Love. Well, it's time to take that break. Uh, we've been talking with New York Times bestselling author and career expert Dan Miller. And when we return, Dan's going to share with us some key principles that will help you develop and continue to grow a life 
um, where you're going to get up excited every morning to live your day. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. You're listening to One Shot, One Life on 1499.3 KLIN. One Shot, One Life is presented by Lincoln Coin and Bullion, where we respect our clients' privacy. We discourage walk-ins to minimize customer overlap and fully encourage all customers to call us to schedule an appointment. We operate by appointment only to offer our customers a discreet and confidential transaction. You're listening to 1499.3 KLIN. Highly recommend having some layers. One shot in this amazing one life, helping you make every single day count. This is One Shot, One Life on 1499.3 KLIN. Well, welcome back. It's 32 past the hour. I'm your host, Doug Fitzgerald. Thank you so much for joining us on One Shot, One Life. We want to thank our One Shot, One Life show partners. We have an amazing group of local and regional businesses um, that deeply believe in our message, and they've partnered alongside of us, and we just want to thank them. Lincoln Coin and Bullion, my trusted gold and silver experts for over a decade. John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, proudly serving the Lincoln and surrounding areas for over 25 years. KC Smile, Dr. Headley and staff, they completely transform my mug up here, my grill, and uh, they can do the same thing for you. You can check out my transformation at my website, oneshotonelife.com. We also want to thank Youth for Christ of Lincoln, a nonprofit, non-denominational ministry serving over 2,400 young people here in the Lincoln and surrounding areas. And our brand new partner starting this week, the Jeff Searcy, uh, excuse me, the Searcy team of home real estate. Uh, Jeff, Mary, Hannah, Wes, and Jasper are incredible to work with right here in Lincoln. Uh, they've helped my wife, Tammy, and I uh, buy and sell five of our homes over the the past 30 years so we completely trust them um, they've been our exclusive realtors and i highly recommend them to you so go to the searcyteam.com well if you or your business would like to partner with us at one shot one life and join the team you can do that by contacting me directly at doug at klin.com doug at klin.com plus We've got some amazing listeners. I mean, they're contacting us throughout the week. We also have studio audience today. We have Mike in the studio, which we appreciate. So, uh, yeah, hey, you might want to contact us if you want to jump in and see how this show works. Maybe we'll get you in the studio as well. It's kind of fun to have a studio. Again, Josh, we need to have a studio audience section. I mean, last week we were had a had a just a studio full of people yeah we so, had a house full it was great so you know if we can get some if we can get kind of a expand our studio and we can get some like stadium seating and yeah. snacks and all that stuff maybe we can not. expand maybe take into us that all out right over here <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right well our guest today is dan miller dan is a new york times best-selling author and career expert dan um in the latest segment you shared your life story and why you wrote the book 48 days to the work and life you love let's dig into some of those powerful principles you share in the book now as i began working uh, with 
with each of my clients, uh, oftentimes uh, as they evaluate their lives and careers, just like you were saying earlier in the first segment, they'll tell me that they feel that form of discontent in their lives and their jobs, like, um, you know, they're doing something insignificant and feeling like they were me meant for a lot more than what they're currently doing and that sometimes they feel like they've lost their opportunity to fully live out their hopes and dreams. Dan, where do you suggest someone start as they look at developing a life and career of significance and satisfaction? Yeah, absolutely. Really foundational question for this whole process. And it's the same whether you're 15 or 65, or wherever you happen to be. Identify three areas. Number one, your skills and abilities. And that's why a little life experience really helps in this process. It's easier to do this when you're 45 and asking these questions like you ask at the outset of the show today. Right. Then when you're 18, because life experience helps us clarify. And a lot of times those initial two or three jobs, the most value of those is to help us understand what we don't want to do. So it's a clarifying process. But so wherever you are, what are your skills and abilities not just what you can do but what you enjoy doing number two what are your personality traits this sometimes gets overlooked there's no right or wrong good or bad here but identify how do you relate to other people what kind of environments you're most comfortable in how do you manage persuade sell all those things no matter what it is if you're shy and introverted that's fine you don't have to change who you are but understanding who you are is a really big piece of this and then the third thing is values, dreams, and passions. Mm. Now, and, and we need to trust those. You know, a lot of times those are overlooked. You know, those are kind of pushed to the side. So if somebody enjoys art or music or poetry or sculpture, you know, people are likely to say, well-meaning parents and teachers, well, that's fine, but you have to do something that's practical and realistic. And thus, great ideas, great talent oftentimes gets buried. So it's those three things. Take a fresh look. Again, if you just went through a job loss, that's fine. It's a good time to draw that line in the sand. What are my skills and abilities? What are my personality traits? What are my values, dreams, and passions? And those mature, those develop over time. They may not be exactly the same as they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But that's the starting point. Josh, you had a question for Dan I thought was really good, and this might be a great time to ask that. Yeah, it's kind of along the same lines yeah. as, as Doug's question. So I have... A very good friend of mine um, who he's had just a few jobs since I've known him. He has the ability to stay with a job. Um, but unfortunately, I think um, a lot of the reason he's able to stay with a job is because I don't, I don't think that in his heart he believes that he deserves to have a good job. So he'll have a job that he, he's just kind of miserable at. And he's probably about the last person to realize that he's miserable um, when he has one of those jobs. And... Uh, it, it breaks my heart to see it, and I just wanted to ask you, um, Dan, how, how, can, how can I start that conversation? How can I kind of start guiding him t to, to help him to understand that, that he doesn't have to be miserable just to make money, and he can wow. still be a good provider? Yeah, yeah, that, that's a really tough spot to be in, and a lot of people think they're being responsible by just continuing in something where they're in what I call comfortable misery. Emerson talked about divine discontent, exactly what you're describing, Josh, that sense that this isn't really it. There's just that unrest. We need to trust that, not try to bury that, but trust that. That's an indication something's out of alignment here. And here's the deal. I mean, a lot of people think, well, I just need to keep this job. You know, it's got a 401k program and I get a reasonable paycheck. So I need to just stay here. I've got a vested retirement due in 13 years. I mean, just a horrible picture of just endurance there. Mm -hmm. No, life is too short for that. And it doesn't mean you're going to be irresponsible because if you move into that sweet spot that blends passion, talent, and money, it's a whole lot easier to generate money when you're doing something where you really feel like you're in the flow, where you yeah. love what you're doing. Yeah. It's a whole lot easier. So people who think they're being responsible because they're getting a good paycheck, they're overlooking an opportunity to move in something that may double or triple that. See, the expectation is, well, this must be selfish to move into something that I really love. Right. And right. if I did that, then my paycheck would go down. Yeah. We always yeah. assume less if we move toward what we enjoy when actually the experience shows us the reverse is true. 
You know, in the book, uh, it goes along with this, Dan, you talk about the zone of genius. And I think you oh, have yeah. four different la- uh, levels there. What is that? And walk us through the zone of genius. You know, this is something that really changed my work, my weekly routine. And I'll, I'll tell you why as we go through these. So I was part of a program called Strategic Coach, and we identified how we use our time. And once we went through and listed everything we did, and I listed about 40 things that I was doing in a, in a given week, then we had to identify which of those are incompetent. I get them done, but I'm really not good at doing those. Somebody else could do them much better. So incompetent and then competent. Things that I do pretty well, but probably anybody else could step in and do it as well. Then things that are excellent. You know, things that I'm known for, things that keep the cash flow coming, things that I'm excellent. But what about the zone of genius? Those things that only I can do. Things that are unique to me, to my unique background experience, academic experience, and all. Zone of genius. When I started this process, I was spending about 25% of my time in my zone of genius. My goal was to get to 75% of my time there. And I pretty well accomplished that as we began this new year, 2022. But, and and here's, here's my recommendation. Those things where you are incompetent, eliminate. Whatever you do, have to do, you eliminate that. Competent activities, delegate. Mm. Excellent, systematize. And then zone of genius, expand. Now, I know not everybody has the capability in what work you're doing to make those kind of adjustments, but you should, even if you're in a traditional job, you should be able to recognize those things and more and more move toward your zone of genius. But that has, that has given me so much peace and also so much margin. I've been surprised at how much freedom I have as I did a better job of delegating and systematizing and eliminating, giving myself more time for my zone of genius. And and that for me is to, you know, is to, to think and to write, to explore writings that have been done in the past, and then to create content that can inspire people and help them find their own zone of genius today. Does that help you then find more contentment in what you do? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like taking a deep, breath of fresh air mm. when you do that because that's where I mean we, we talk about historically we talk about athletes being in the zone when they everything just really right. comes together right. yeah and that's what this is so anybody can experience that same feeling even if you're not an athlete zone of genius that's that really precious spot where everything is just clicking and you're being you're being productive profitable at peace with what you're doing and loving your life. You mentioned 2022, you talked about in your book, you're doing another revision here in a couple of years. Obviously over the last couple of years, the pandemic hit. So now your book is gonna take a transition, I'm I'm assuming with some things. How have you seen as you work with people, how have you seen the pandemic impact the workplace? It's had a dramatic effect. And frankly, I think it's been healthy. It may sound radical because I know a lot of people felt wounded and hurt during that period of time. But you know, when we get used to doing things in the same way, just that habitual habit can become part of the way we expect things to continue. And it's not always good. You know, we see even like in real estate cycles, there's too much inflation, things are artificially up, and we need kind of a purging. We need kind of a draw line in the sand, boom, this isn't, and it needs a correction. The workplace, when you think about the work models that we've had, when we go back 100 years, Doug, if you came to me and said, Dan, I want you to build me a wagon, we would not have agreed on you know, $20 an hour or you know, some such thing. We would have simply said, Dan, when you get the wagon done, I'll give you $200. It was up to me how much time I spent. So we simply paid for results. This model of being paid hourly only started in about 1913 when Henry Ford with the assembly line says, hey, you guys stand here all day long, do the same thing repeatedly. I'll give you $5, you know, $5 a day to do that. And that was good pay back then. But that's an artificial model. It doesn't really make sense to just pay somebody for their time. The only thing that makes sense is to pay somebody for good work, Mm. good productivity, good results. So what we've seen during the pandemic, everybody had to go home. 
And all of a sudden, companies are saying, we don't really care where somebody sits or if they show up in our building or how many hours they spend. All we really care about is that they get the job done. And so we saw a massive move to being paid for results. ROWE, results only work environment. A lot of companies have moved to that. where we don't care when you clock in, when you clock out, just produce the work. And then workers being at home doing that discovered, I'm not really a captive of the company there. If I'm really good at graphic design, I want to do that only, not all the other things the company was having me to do to fill in the time. So I'm going to find five companies that can use my unique skill, but don't need me 40 hours a week. They may only need me eight hours a month. And they create a new model where they increase their income exponentially and reduce the time required. All right, th those are the things that are happening in the pandemic. And we're seeing terms like electronic immigrant, digital nomad, that we didn't have a few years ago, and those new work models are now available. Oh, that's so good. That, that is so good. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Dan, we're going to take another quick break. If you've loved what you heard so far, pick up his book, 48 Days to the Work and Life That You Love. You can find it on Amazon.com or anywhere fine books are sold. Uh, you can also check out his website at 48days.com as well. We're going to take this break, and when we come back, Dan's going to share some tips on how to build a side business to create some extra income. Plus, we're going to ask him the multiplier question. <laughs> you're not going to want to miss his answer to that. Um, you're listening to One Shot, One Life, on Lincoln's number one news and talk station, 1499.3 KLIN. One Shot, One Life is presented by Lincoln Coin and Bullion. Buying and selling precious metals such as silver, gold, platinum, and palladium. We buy and sell coins and bills, both domestic and foreign. You're listening to 1499.3 KLIN. Helping you tap into the power of the ultimate success formula to win at anything in life. This is One Shot, One Life on 1499.3 KLIN. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on One Shot, One Life. We love having you join us. It is 49 past the hour, and I'm your host, Doug Fitzgerald. We want to thank our newest part partners to the show, uh, Youth for Christ of Lincoln. Pastor Matt Schulte is the executive director there. And Youth for Christ, they're a non-denominational, non-profit uh, organization. They serve over 2,400 youth here in the Lincoln surrounding areas. They've got great ministries that serve so many areas in, in the lives of teens. The first one is Campus Life. It's for teens of middle schoolers and high schoolers. 
Their second ministry is juvenile justice, where they work with teens who are jailed. And then they also work with pregnant teens in the area of parent life. So, um, man, check them out. They do an amazing job impacting our whole city and so many different people's lives here. Um, you know, we also recently kicked off our brand new podcast called Engaging Today's Teens. That's where Pastor Matt and I equip parents, teachers, and grandparents to help teens navigate through their formative years. And this week's episode, we encourage and talk about how to tell people that we're sorry, not only personally as adults, but also as our teens to, to emulate to them uh, that whole idea and also teach them during that process. We also talk about, and I think we talked about this last time, Josh, slang of the day. We have a word um, that Matt brings up where that teens are using that I don't know the definition to. And so this week's word is Chad. So okay. if you want to learn about what that means, you're going to have to listen to the podcast. I'm going to have to. I think I know what it means, All right. but I'm not. You got to go check it out. Uh, you can go to the website, yfclincoln.org. That's yfclincoln.org and tune in. So our team at One Shot One Life, uh, we're looking forward to building a long and beneficial partnership with Youth, Youth for Christ of Lincoln. Well, coming up on One Shot One Life here in the month of April on the 9th, next Saturday, Miss Nebraska USA Natalie Peeper and Miss Nebraska Teen USA Farron Meddy will be in the studio talking about their experience and what they'll be doing this year as they run for the Miss USA pageant that'll be later on this fall. And then on April 23rd, we have award-winning film producer, actress, and author Betty Jewel Slater. She's going to come in and, and talk about her life experience, her book that she wrote, uh, all the things that she does uh, with her amazing actress work. But she's also going to be sharing about her faith and how to utilize that to successfully navigate through the current world issues of politics, economic stress, and racism. It's going to be a great show. You want to tune in April 23rd to One Shot, One Life. Well, we've had a great show so far. It's been really intriguing. If you want to listen to it, make sure you go back and listen to our podcast. If you didn't catch the first section of it, uh, you can go to KLAN.com to listen to that. You can go to KLAN's app, or you can just check it out on your favorite podcast platform as well. We've been talking to uh, New York Times bestselling author and career expert Dan Miller, and we want to continue the conversation, Dan. You know, something that's really taking off over the last several years is this whole idea of a side gig or a, what some people would say is a side hustle. And at one shot, we highly recommend to our listeners to consider the idea of supplementing their current job uh, with a side business. And I know that's something that you touch upon within your book. If somebody's interested, like you've talked about in your life, of being an entrepreneur, what are some first steps that they can take to do that? Knowing that most of those side gigs today are not just time dependent. Now, true, somebody can start a yard service where they go out on the weekend or evenings, you know, that's going to really put a crunch on a regular job if you're trying to do both. I encourage people to explore using 15 hours a week for that side business. But balancing those with times of creating, dealing with your customers directly, the marketing that's required. And if you do that, you really can build a significant side business. So let's say that you understand landscaping and so you do a little video course. See, that, that gives you the potential then to scale that and to leverage that in ways that don't just keep using more and more time. Or if you start doing Fulfilled by Amazon, or if you write a book like you and I have done, mm -hmm. those are the kind of things where you can have some product that you can then leverage by using that 15 hours and grow it. And my encouragement then is keep your regular job, use your side business using 15 hours a week until you get to 50% of your normal salary. At that point, you can see the trend and recognize if you were able to devote the rest of your time to that, you could easily replicate an increase from your current salary. That's a process that thousands of people have gone through, especially in these last few years. That's the way I recommend to start it. You have some great tools on your website at 48days.com that specifically look at that area. I was looking at um, the website uh, throughout the week. You've got an area where uh, you teach people some basic steps about starting a business, another area about growing a business. How can that help our listeners? Well, it makes them where they are not vulnerable. You know, a lot of people feel trapped in what they're doing and feeling like, well, if I quit this, you know, then I'd really be stuck. You know, we've had, though, an interesting phenomenon, this great resignation. You know, we have had nine months, consecutive months, where there's over four million people who quit their jobs in America. Mm. When that happened last year, last March, we thought it'd never happen again. And yet it has. There have been nine months every month, more than four million people have quit. However, in February, the last month where we have accurate 
results right now. In February, there were 6.7 new jobs where people got walked into new jobs. So it's a positive uplift. It doesn't mean those 4 million people just quit and now they're doing nothing. People are not trying to figure out how to do nothing. They realize they're in the driver's seat and they can choose. If they don't like what they're doing here, they can go down the street and get four job offers before the sun goes down. Right. So what, it, what this whole thing does, what you and I are talking about, it puts people in the driver's seat. Nobody has to feel like they're a victim. Nobody has to feel like they're trapped. They have the ability to experiment with these side gigs. It, find what it is that would really work for you. What really does blend your skills and abilities, your personality tendencies, your values, dreams, and passions. And you may find you ha- are you are right on top of an idea that you can grow and scale and to give you results like you've never dreamed of. Well, before we close things out, we have just a couple of minutes here, Dan. I want to get to the multiplier question uh, because sometimes we get so in-depth with our our conversation that I forget to ask or we run out of time. So I want to do this, and then we'll talk about the resources you have available. But here's my question. Uh, What is one thing that you wish you would have known earlier in life that would have made a greater impact on you and those around you? The biggest factor in whatever success I have been able to experience is as a result of relationships that I have nurtured. When I was young, I thought it was just a matter of knowledge. If I learn enough, then I can outpace anybody else and be at the top of the pack. That's just one part. Learning is important, but there's nothing that compares to the relationships. At this point, just as an example, I've got a new book coming out. When that new book comes out, My marketing plan is to send it out to 300 of my friends. That's it. Hmm. I don't have anything fancy to go out and find people who don't know me. Those people who know, love, and trust me, they will spread the word. They're the sneezers. I encourage people to have what I call a 3 a.m. list. Who could you call at 3 a.m. who would take your call, not only take your call, but really help you out? I mean, I put in as a caveat, somebody would send you $10,000. Who would do that? And my recommendation is you have as many people on that list as you are years of age. If you're 40, you need to have 40 people on that list. I've got over 100 on mine. I'm not that old, but I got a little (laughs) margin there. But develop the relationships. That's what I needed to learn early and encourage everybody to start wherever you are, nurturing meaningful relationships. Well, Dan, uh, that's great. You've provided some great information. If you're interested in what Dan provides, go to 48days.com. There he has personality assessments, books, courses, and so much more. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for joining us today on One Shot, One Life. Hopefully, we'll have you back in the future. Hey, my pleasure. Always a great time having a conversation with you, Doug. (laughs) This has been really good. Well, if you'd like to listen to the podcast of this show or previous shows, just go to KLAN.com or listen on all podcast platforms. We want to thank today's guest, Dan Miller, and special thanks to Josh and Johnny for producing the show. Until next time, take full advantage of your amazing one life and make every single day count. We'll see you next Saturday. Thank you for listening to the One Shot, One Life show. Visit OneShotOneLife.com to get a free download of our... You're back on with Dan. Hey, Dan.